Welcome to this configured terminal presentation. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023. This is a short sample from our CCNA training course, which you can find at configuredterminal.com. In this sample, we're going to look at the fundamentals of VLANs. I'm going to explain briefly the advantages of VLANs, and we're going to start looking at the physical and logical topologies of a network when VLANs are implemented. In the full course, we discuss VLANs in a lot more detail. We look at more complicated and detailed physical and logical topologies. We look at access ports. We look at Editor 1Q and ISL. We look at native VLANs. We look at static and dynamic VLAN assignment. We look at voice VLANs. And we spend a lot of time looking at VLAN trunking protocol or VTP, showing you how to set it up, the issues you may encounter with VTP, the various modes, the VLAN.dat file, and VTP pruning. I hope you enjoy this quick sample from our CCNA training course. This is an example of a poorly designed network. If this central switch went down, it would affect all devices in the topology. No host would be able to communicate with each other because all communication needs to go via this single device, which is now a single point of failure. Broadcasts once again will flood throughout the network. The broadcast is received on all links and will consume the bandwidth on every single link in this topology. Once again, every single device has to process that broadcast and its CPU will be interrupted by the broadcast. Continuous broadcasts will slow down the entire network. Because of the way MAC address tables work, traffic going to a unicast address where the MAC address is not learned by the switches will also be flooded throughout the topology. Multicasts are treated in the same way as broadcasts by most layer 2 switches. So multicasts will be flooded throughout the network and affect all devices. A poorly designed network may be disorganized and poorly documented and lack easily identified traffic flows which makes support maintenance and problem resolution very time consuming and very difficult. You also have the issue of security. If this host on the left hand side is in marketing and the host on the right hand side is in the accounts department, the person in marketing has access to that machine across the network because security might not be implemented properly. It becomes very difficult to manage a poorly designed network. So what is a virtual LAN or VLAN? A VLAN is essentially a single broadcast domain or logical subnet or logical network. You could say it's a group of hosts with a common set of requirements attached to the same broadcast domain regardless of where they are physically located. You are able to group multiple devices together logically rather than physically. So it is possible to span a subnet or VLAN across multiple switches even though that's not recommended today. You can design a VLAN structure that allows you to group together stations or hosts that are segmented logically by functions, project teams and other types of applications once again without regard to physical location. So some of the advantages of VLANs include segmentation where you segment or separate users based on function. For instance the sales department will go into a specific VLAN and the accountancy department will go into a different VLAN. It's very flexible. Without changing physical cabling, you can move a user from one VLAN to another. It also provides security because users are in separate VLANs and therefore have to traverse a layer 3 device like a router to get from one VLAN to another. On the router you can implement access lists to control which users have access to various VLANs. We'll be talking a lot about access lists later in the course but for now, understand that it gives you the ability to enhance security by separating users. These days, VLANs also have other advantages, specifically when implementing voice over IP. You can put your IP phones into a separate VLAN to your workstations and therefore provide a better quality of service to the IP phones. So implementing VLANs has many advantages in modern networks today. Something that I find that always confuses people is the difference between a physical topology and a logical topology. You need to change your paradigm 
and no longer think about the physical topology of the network, but rather envision what the logical topology looks like. The logical topology will be very different to the physical topology as soon as VLANs are implemented. So here's an example of what a physical topology may look like. You have four physical machines connected to a single physical switch on ports 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03 and 04. So that's the physical topology. However, logically, we can put interfaces into different VLANs. So all you need to do is go onto the interface, and I'll show you the commands in a moment, and you put that interface into a specific VLAN. Let's say for argument's sake, the red VLAN. Now VLANs on switches are configured with numbers, but often when we discuss VLANs, we talk about colors to try and differentiate between the VLANs and make it easier to understand. So assume for the moment that PCA and PCD have been put into the red VLAN by typing commands on the switch ports. PCB and PCC have been put into the green VLAN. Please note that the hosts are oblivious to what's happened. You as the administrator have just gone onto the switch and changed the VLAN that the port belongs to. By default all ports belong to VLAN 1 on Cisco switches but by using a single command you can move that port to a separate VLAN. So once again the physical topology looks as follows but you've just got to imagine that these PCs are in separate VLANs. However when looking at the logical topology things are dramatically different. PCA and PCD are in the red VLAN on our switch. PCC and PCB are on the green VLAN. Logically there are two separate switches or two separate LANs here. We have virtualized our LAN infrastructure and created two separate local area networks. These networks cannot communicate with each other from a layer 2 point of view. VLANs are implemented at layer 2 and the only way to move from one VLAN to another is to go via a layer 3 device such as a router. Remember please a VLAN is a separate logical subnet or separate broadcast domain. If A sent a broadcast, that broadcast would only be received by D. If C sent a broadcast, that broadcast would only be received by B, which is very different where all the devices are on the same VLAN or same physical switch. Once again, ports can be put into a VLAN using different mechanisms. For the moment, just assume that you as the administrator statically put the port into the relevant VLAN. So going back to our physical view of the topology. In this topology we're not going to use 48-bit MAC addresses because I want to simplify what's going on. So just assume that these numbers A, B, C and D are the MAC addresses of these devices. When A sends a broadcast, that broadcast will be forwarded to the switch with a source address of A and the destination will contain F's, in other words, broadcast. When that frame hits the switch, the switch will make a note of which VLAN that port belongs to. So that frame is internally tagged with the red VLAN. Please note the PC is oblivious to what's going on. The PC just sees this link as standard Ethernet and doesn't understand the concept of VLANs. I'm going to digress just for a second. The architecture of switches vary. Cisco have documents like this one explaining the architecture of a 6500 switch. So for example, looking at the different chassis and different line cards and different supervisors, this document will explain how the architecture is set up. The detail of this is totally out of the scope of the course, but it's just to try and explain a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. One of the things that they explain in this document is the day in the life of a packet going through A6500. And in this example they've got centralized forwarding. So they'll explain how a packet will arrive on an interface and based on different application specific integrated circuits or ASICs how that packet will flow from the ingress port to an egress port going via the data bus on the backplane of the switch. You can learn more about the actual flow of the packet through the switch by going and looking at documents like this. All I want you to realize is that the architecture of different switches work differently. 
And if you want to look at the internals of a switch, there are really good documents on Cisco's website explaining how packets flow through a switch. For this course, we're going to explain it as follows. When the frame arrives on this port, it's internally tagged with a red VLAN. That frame is then copied to all other ports on the switch. However, that broadcast will not be forwarded out of this port because the port is in a different VLAN to the original frame. The frame will also not be forwarded out of this port 03 because the frame is in a different VLAN to the port. However, on this port, the frame will be forwarded out because the VLAN number or color is the same. Please note, only the original frame is sent out of the port. No internal tagging leaves the switch. The PCs, once again, are oblivious to any tagging or changing of frames. So the frame leaves the switch and arrives at PCD in its original form. Source address is A, destination address is a broadcast. So physically we have one switch here, but logically PCA can only send traffic to PCD, not to PCB or PCC. They are on a separate VLAN or separate logical switch. If A try to send a unicast to C, so the source address is A in the frame and the destination address is C which is this PC on the green VLAN that frame would be sent to the switch as a standard Ethernet frame. Now we're assuming here that A has somehow learnt the MAC address of C. So he is sending a frame directly to C. Normally he wouldn't even be able to learn that MAC address. So in this example the person on A could be up to no good. The frame arrives at the switch and the switch tags the frame internally with a red VLAN. That frame is copied to all ports on the switch. Now once again that depends on the switch architecture so let's just assume for the moment that that's what's going to happen on this specific switch. Now the central ASIC checks the MAC address table and sees that C can be found on port 03. So the central ASIC sends a flush message to the other ports to remove the copies of the frame. So the frame is only available on port 03. However, just before sending out the frame, the port VLAN color is checked against the frame. The frame is a red VLAN frame because it arrived on a red port, but this is a green VLAN interface, so the frame is not transmitted and is dropped. So the frame never gets to PCC. Therefore, A is not able to access the green VLAN. Logically, A is separated from C, and from a layer 2 point of view, there is no connection between the red VLAN and the green VLAN. As mentioned previously, the only way to get from one VLAN to another is to traverse a layer 3 device such as a router. And as there's no router in this example, the traffic is totally separated. Now here's a slightly more complicated example. A is still in the red VLAN, but is connected to switch 1. D is in the red VLAN, but is in this case connected to switch 2. C is in the green VLAN, connected to switch 2. And B is in the green VLAN, connected to switch 1. A special type of link is required between the two switches so that they can communicate VLAN information between them and that is known as a trunk port. This interface will run a trunking protocol so that VLAN information can be transmitted from one switch to another. The two trunking protocols that are used are ISL or InterSwitch Link and Editor 1Q. Now ISL was a Cisco proprietary protocol and tends not to be used today. Edited or 1Q, the industry standard, is the protocol of choice for communicating VLAN information between switches across trunking ports. Now once again, it's important to remember what the physical topology looks like, which is as follows, and then the logical topology, which looks like this. That concludes our sample of VLANs from our CCNA training course. For more free information, please visit our blog, at configureterminal.com. You can also purchase our CCNA training course from configureterminal.com. All the best with your studies and thank you for watching.